Slavery is one of the greatest evils against humanity. Over the past few centuries, it has become frowned upon by society. But unfortunately, it still exists even today in several parts of the world. What we read about slavery in history books is very cruel. However, the stories told by past slaves are just haunting. Welcome back to the I Told You Another Story channel. In this video, we will be looking at the real history of slavery as told by past slaves. The concept of slavery became prevalent between the 16th and 19th centuries, with the victims being mainly Africans. Within that time, 10 to 12 million Africans were kidnapped by Europeans and sold to North and South America, at the second stage of the so-called triangular trade between Europe, Africa, and the Americas. These people were taken by force from their homes, they were sold between countries for diplomatic and business purposes. In the 1700s, for example, the British Empire, which was almost solely responsible for the slave trade, made a deal with the Spanish colonies to supply them with thousands of slaves per year. These slaves were subjected to hard labor, most of which involved cultivation and in return, Britain reaped a certain percentage of yield each year. In no time, the Americas began to adapt the culture of slave labor and with the increase in sugar and tobacco plantations, the demand for slaves spiked in the 18th century. The slaves were taken primarily from West Africa, with a huge percentage from the Senegal and Niger rivers. They were handpicked by the enslavers and consisted mainly of able men and women old enough to start families, leaving behind the elderly and disabled. The journey of America was usually long and cruel. The slave ships were unsanitary and uncomfortable. But the enslavers didn't care. The slaves were chained together and packed in hundreds to stay in decks with low ceilings. The ventilation was very poor, the heat intolerable, and oxygen levels were often insufficient. The slaves were permitted to go to the upper decks a few hours per day to prevent an uprising. The journey took several weeks and in some cases months. Once they arrived, the slaves were assessed and prepared to be sold out to new masters. Each slave was tagged with a price depending on their physical attributes. They were bought and sold at auction, where they were made to stand on benches with chains around their neck and limbs, while Americans bid for their ownership, and a slave could be sold for as low as $300. The first generation of slaves were assigned to entrepreneurs and businessmen who dealt in clothing and agriculture as indentured servants or lifelong apprentices. Because they were brought at a price, the slaves were not paid wages or salaries. Their masters to whom they belonged were expected to provide them with food and shelter. However, many masters did not take their side of the bargain very seriously, and many slaves were left to fend for themselves. The slaves were not allowed to own property or get an education, and their ignorance was taken advantage of by the enslavers. They were viewed as property rather than people, and were expected to do nothing but work. Their behavior and movement were controlled, and they were taught that their place was to respect and serve their masters. Despite the harsh treatment, the slaves continued to serve their masters, not out of respect or satisfaction, but out of fear of what would happen if they revolted. Those who dared to rebel were flogged and given painful punishments. The cruel nature of the masters put all the slaves in line, and the experience of scapegoats reminded the rest of what would happen if they fell out of line. Offenders were stripped, tied up, and flogged until they bled. Afterwards, they were sent back out to work. They had no right and neither could they stand up for themselves. They lived under the worst conditions imaginable. The living conditions of the slaves varied among them, depending largely on their owners' personalities and sometimes financial status. Some slaves were provided with houses, while some were made to build houses for themselves, on an allotted piece of land, with whatever materials they could find. Naturally, they built their houses from mud and hay, like their houses back in Africa, which are not fit for the more extreme weather conditions in America. In these small huts, they were crammed with up to 10 people sleeping on the floor, or at best, their beds were made from hay or old rags. Slaves who worked in the fields helped themselves to whatever was left after the masters had taken what they wanted. Those who worked in the masters' homes fed on leftovers from the family meals. Some were lucky to be given good food, but their diet was portioned and controlled and most slaves were entitled to just one meal every day. Regarding clothes, slaves were provided with just one pair of shoes and three sets of underwear. Their clothes were usually poorly fitted and made out of uncomfortable fabric. However, this was a luxury not all slaves were afforded. Some walked barefoot and wore worn-out clothes that barely covered them up. 
As the years passed, the slave population in America increased, and the slave status was passed down from parent to child. In fact, their living condition deteriorated down the line because the masters usually weren't willing to cater to any more people. The slaves worked their fingers to be bone apart from their deplorable living conditions. They had no weekends off days. Instead, they worked from sunrise to sunset every day, meeting their master's needs. Some masters would demand that slaves worked on the field all night, and they had no choice but to oblige. Their free time was spent attending to some of their personal needs they hadn't had time to take care of, like mending their huts, doing their laundry, or planting crops to support their poor diets. Even when they were tired, they could not show it, fearing what their masters might do to them. On top of that, they were bruised, branded, raped, and abused. Eventually, the African slaves could not stand the unfair treatment and began to fight for their freedom. The journey to freedom was no doubt difficult, but they persevered and kept fighting. Eventually, slavery was abolished in the United States. But the aftermath was not quite what the slaves had hoped for. In 1941, American storyteller and radio presenter John Henry Folk put together a project to raise awareness of racism in the U.S. He interviewed a few formerly enslaved people who recounted their harsh experiences. The interview of Fountain Hughes, a 101-year-old formerly enslaved person at the time, stood out for various reasons. Hughes was born in Charlottesville, Virginia, as a third-generation slave. His grandfather belonged to Thomas Jefferson, the third U.S. president. Unlike his grandfather, who was an immigrant, Hughes was born into slavery. He spoke about growing up in the society where fellow blacks were assigned a price tag. The deplorable standard of living and his personal experiences as a slave. He barely had any clothes and didn't start wearing shoes until he was in his early teenage years. He also mentioned how his movement was monitored and controlled. He recounts how he wasn't permitted to go across the street without receiving a permit from his master and could only go where he was sent. After almost 400 years of slavery, the Africans found their voices and began to express their frustration. When their protests could no longer be ignored, the Emancipation Proclamation was passed, and the slaves were finally free. However, freedom didn't feel how they had envisioned. Although they weren't subjected to forced labor, the black people weren't considered respectable members of society. They were bullied by Americans and even Union soldiers, who were supposed to be their liberators. According to Hughes, these people would take away their best chances of survival and leave them with almost nothing. On the other hand, enslavers in the South were reluctant to accept this proclamation made by President Lincoln. Displeased by the idea of losing labor they paid for, they chose not to inform their slaves of the Emancipation Proclamation. The slaves who couldn't read or write weren't aware of the life-changing development, and some ended up working under their masters for up to six extra months. When these slaves were finally set free, they left their master's service with nothing. No money, no property, very little possession, and no education. They realized quickly that they were all alone and at a huge disadvantage. The concept of freedom wasn't as glorious as it seemed, and it came at a huge expense many couldn't afford. Many slaves died due to starvation. Many who sought jobs were rejected by the gloating Americans. Many who were hired were severely underpaid and some realized that they'd rather be slaves if it meant having food and a roof over their heads. In that same interview, Hughes was asked if he ever considered giving away his freedom and being a slave all over again. His answer was unwavering. Unfortunately, slavery is still practiced in different forms, and slaves worldwide are people. People who deserve better. Thank you for watching this video. Hit us up in the comments section and give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.